Joining us from the Minnesota Wild, Jakob Lauko. Jakob, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me, guys. It's about time, buddy. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of overdue, hey? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I love you guys, too. So the reason why it's overdue for you to come on, A, you're very nice to us, and you particularly love Pete's social media, don't we all? But you're the most fascinating guy in the NHL, I think. You are from Czech, but you basically speak in memes. Uh, you're obsessed with grapes and Lord of the Rings, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And uh, you now play for the Minnesota Wild, which is always something Pete and I have been trying to wrap our heads around and try to get more into the wild. So this is a great avenue for us that uh, you're there now. You're in Minnesota right now getting ready for camp? Yeah, yeah. I, I arrived a few days few days ago. I uh, settled I settled in a, in a house uh, uh, it's a house. It's actually Vinny's literary house. Uh, the one, the one. Uh, Vinny's been traded for me, so we've been playing together in Providence. So right after the trade, he we called each other, and he was like, "Hey, if you wanna, if you wanna stay in my house during the season, you can." So we just set it up, and uh, and I'm I'm in, in Vinny's house. So so it did work out perfectly. You take each other's jobs, and then you take his house. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. That's so. I mean, I know that like. I mean, maybe when you get traded from Boston, you're like, man, I wish they wouldn't have done that or whatever. And like, you, you probably feel some sort of emotions, but you probably don't feel anything towards the guy for whom you're traded. But that's so, <laughs> that's so funny, no. but also perfect for you that you're like, man, they traded me for this guy. So now I live in his house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it was, it was like so funny. Cause like, especially as Vinny, uh, he's, he's like the only guy, only guy that I knew from the team. And, uh he just texted me like two minutes after the trade happened and we called each other like five minutes after and and he we were we were basically like like what the fuck like <laughs> so 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 it was kind of it was kind of funny like we uh we, we've been laughing about it and you know you know it, it's it's really turned out turned out great with uh, with the housing thing and uh with me being in his house so i'm i'm really really grateful to him it, dj brings up a good point though that like you're you essentially like have you speak in memes and that's the funniest thing about you i think uh but you're from czech republic you speak pretty good english How, like, played in the queue note so like he has the dry saddle thing going on where like yes english second language but did get a little head start came yeah, over to north fair. america Got a little like uh, Krejci had that same thing going on but it's finished how, how do you how did you just like learn fucking memes <laughs> it's, it's wild did you learn to speak english through memes in any sort of way like did did they affect your your learning of the english language okay so uh my learning of like english language was uh you know like you have english in school uh i had like a private teacher uh growing up like when i when i realized that, like a hockey hockey get like a little bit more serious when i was starting like playing with pros like around like 16 some uh you know the scouts are coming to see me for the games and stuff like that so i kind of get like a little more into into english and uh you know you went to combines you're speaking with everyone about hockey you feel pretty good you get to the draft like you know they're asking you about the hockey questions and like yeah, yeah so you feel great about your english then i go, then i get to boston and i didn't understand anything really and yeah so so i understood every third word like you know you get into the point you get to the point when you're talking like uh about stuff not about non-hockey stuff and i just didn't understand like literally anything so so i i gotta say that the the, the one year in queue like helped me a lot because uh you know there were there were guys from like who who speak french the, the english were second language for them as well and a few guys, few guys which were from like Nova Scotia, uh, you know, Moncton and places like that, which which were like English English guys. So I was kind of like a learning learning a lot from them, and you know, just speaking speaking on a daily basis in in English. So it uh, helped me a lot. And the one thing the one thing that I was doing was like playing video games, and like you play video games in English. So uh, I was I was learning a lot through video games, and like. That you learn a lot of nice watch. words playing video games. Lot, I mean, when I was playing single players, yes. When I played multiplayer, I didn't learn anything good. But it was 
<laughs> He's just repeating Call of Duty lobby uh, <laughs> lobby slurs. You're like, what? I heard it what? on the, on the internet. <laughs> I was also wondering, like, I don't want to drop a C bomb here, but like, if you do learn English through memes, like, what? Like, do you walk into work one day, see like Don Sweeney, and be like? Oh, you're really serving like C word today. And they're like, that is not how we talk around here, young man. But uh, there, uh, the, the, we'll talk about the Swayman Shattenkirk elevator thing. But it's such a funny, adorable video. You sitting on the floor in an elevator in a scary moment. And you, it's Swayman takes a video of you and you're just sitting there and you say, go to Shaddy's, they said. And I'm like, that is not. What I would say in that moment, but that is very, <laughs> that is very meme coded. I mean, I mean, like it was just like a, such a random thing. It's like we were like literally we were on our way down, and I I don't know if I dropped it or Sway dropped it, and we were like, hey, like, can you imagine if you got stuck here? And five seconds, oh. five seconds late, five seconds later, we got stuck in that elevator, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like Sway, hey, this this. Hey, this just didn't happen, right? Like, like someone's like making making fun of you, fun of us, right? And literally, it just didn't it just didn't click to like a bottom by like I don't know like few inches, so they couldn't open it. So so we immediately called Shaddy. Shaddy went down, and there was like a little small little window that where he was like basically laughing at us for like ten minutes. <laughs> then, then we called like you know there was no no chance for us to open it and. We call we call the the fire uh, like the fire department if they can get us uh, out of it out of the elevator. So one one fire uh the, like a one fire truck came and they were trying to open it, but it was an old elevator with like a magnet uh, magnet lock. So they had no idea how to open it basically like without a without a big like a like a saw. So they 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 had to call another fire truck. They bring the like a big uh, how you call it, chainsaw. They they brought like a big chainsaw and they they had to they had to cut the lock. So it took us like almost like an hour. We were stuck there, but you know it was just it was just like so random, so funny because we've been talking. We were literally like joking about being stuck there, and a few seconds after we we got stuck. So the, the story was you were visiting Kevin Shattenkirk for uh, yeah. Christmas. You and Jeremy Swayman, which is a nice thing that happens all the time. Players will because if they're their families are out of town or whatever, and you end up getting stuck there. I did have this question on Swayman. Do you think the reason he hasn't signed with the Bruins is because they keep trading his friends? I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in a place to comment on that, but I, <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the reason, but, uh, you know, um, I hope, I hope, I hope they'll, uh, they resolve it uh, soon. Cause, uh, Sway is a, Sway is a hell of a goalie, hell of a person. And, uh, and NHL would uh, would have missed a great great player, great personality to play if if they won't sign uh, if they won't sign it in uh, uh, in uh, in like a in in, uh, in soon, you know. So I hope hope they'll resolve it soon and uh, he will play. He's an incredible person. We we love him so much. How how did it feel getting traded from Boston? I mean. Uh, you know, like first of all, it was a it was a shock. Like I had I had no idea it was gonna happen. Uh, you know, exit meetings with Boston. I think went uh, went like okay, went well. I had no no idea something something would be in talks like about me getting traded. But you know, it was it was during the draft. Uh, we uh, back home. I was back home. We have a, like a big film festival like close to my hometown. So me and my buddies, we were like. Uh, sitting, uh, sitting in the town, uh, having a dinner, and you know, I was kind of like, uh, I was like three beers down, and I'm sitting there, and and I saw, I saw on my phone that uh, like Don Sweeney is calling me, so I'm like, oh my god, I'm getting traded. So <laughs> pick up the phone, got got told that I'm traded to Minnesota, and that was basically it. So uh, it was a, it was a shock for me, and uh, but I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad that I'm in Minnesota right now. Uh, and I'm I'm really excited. I'm really excited for this season. I'll be real, I, I, Pete. I, I, you probably feel the same. Like I'm I'm happy for you in a lot of ways because the the in and out thing. This happens all the time. Like where they're good players who, in whatever their situation is, they're so close to like consistently having that spot and getting it. Like because once you do have the spot, then you can kind of work your way up and establish yourself even more. You're probably at a point in your career, maybe. A, a couple of years in where you want to be 
playing regularly and getting to get as much run as you can, no? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, obviously, like, uh, I just I just felt that uh, first first feeling was like, okay, like, uh, this is a new chance, like, you know, uh, just start somewhere new and build my build my position there. You know, like I play I played like most of the last season, I was I was up the whole year. And now I'm feeling like I, I get somewhere uh, I get to the place where, uh, you know, when you look when you look on, on all the trades that like Minnesota did by the trade deadline, you know, they basically traded their whole fourth line. So uh, I mean, I'm in a place where uh, we can we can establish and like uh, build build something for like for myself in uh, on that fourth line and bring back like the the mentality and like the what uh, what what the Minnesota wants from me and from the fourth line. So uh, so I'm I'm really happy with the position uh, position I'm in uh, I'm in right now and you know just like try to try to build something here. Were you frustrated by the end of your time in Boston by being in and out all the time? I mean, like, even as our relationship aside, like, I was like, just put him in the fucking lineup. He's one of the fastest guys I have. Like, you have more upside than a lot of the guys that they were putting in there. Were you frustrated that you didn't get more of a chance? I mean, like, obviously, like, every like uh, every guy who doesn't play kind of want to play. But, you know, like, I was uh, – we were – they, uh, there were there were some points like uh, especially in playoffs where I thought like I could I could go in and play but you know that's uh, that's the decision decision of the coach decision of the management so so I was I was just trying to be present trying to be positive and like be a be a good teammate so uh, obviously I wanted to play more like like everyone would but it wasn't really my decision and you know you know didn't play di- didn't play that much like but you know it is it is what it is. Uh, it's 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 just like that you know what did that goal in game three feel like because you had the partial break to the net Ekblad I'll say it for you kind of helps you into Bob you end (laughs) up going from a great scoring chance thinking that you're going to get the team back into the game to sit in the penalty box you end up scoring later in that period and you you looked the most pissed I've ever seen someone after they scored a goal. You scored that goal <laughs> and you were like, you look like you were ready to kill somebody. What was that, I guess, like 10 minute period of your life like? I mean, like, it's already like four or five months, right? So I can talk about it. But I mean, like, I had no, I have no, sorry if I dropped it, but I had no fucking idea what the, what the referee was doing with me, like, with me. <laughs> giving me like an interference penalty for that because i i i don't know if like anyone anyone could avoid it or like i i don't know i would need to like a face through someone to not hit bobrovsky at that point when someone drags me put me on the ground and basically hit me hit me to the to their goalie so i'm like how the hell did i get like interference penalty for that so I I yeah I've been really really pissed and after that like I was I scored so I I was pissed yeah I was I was really pissed even though I scored we uh, we we got to talk about we were we almost saw you die last year we were in Chicago when you took the skate to the eye oh my god yeah that's right yeah dude we, you we were like no oh, one no. who's like had your life but continue <laughs> you, you have had awful luck in terms of being out there for like crazy stuff happening to you like go bring us through the chicago thing how scared were you when you took the the skate to the face i mean i just want to say first that i was incredibly incredible incredibly lucky in very unfortunate situation because uh you know obviously i got i got hit along the boards ended up on my four and uh, I think it was Johnny Beecher who pushed their pushed their guy like into the boards, and how he pushed him, he kind of like kick his kick his ba- uh, kick his leg uh, back, and it went right it went right under the visor, uh, close to my close to my eye, and basically like sliced me like a few few millimeters next to the eye, uh, and broke uh, like a broke my skull in like cracked my skull in like four four places. So like it was like immediately I couldn't see anything. It was so much blood. It was it was like squirting through. It was like leaking. I was bloody in like a second. And so I like my first thought was like, hey, like I need to get to the get to the locker room immediately. And 
as I went to the locker room, like right, right in front of the bench, I was kind of like, Hey, I need to, I need to try if I can see, if I can see with my eye. And I put my, I put, I had my, I had my hand like that and I put it down and I couldn't see anything. It was like pitch black. So my thought was like, I, I don't know if my heartbeat was like 200 or something cause, or my heart like stopped, but I, I literally thought that I don't have my eyes. So I probably, that was like a, the scariest, scariest like moment in my life so far. And when we get to the locker room, like the, the trainer, the trainer, like, Hey, Hey, I need to check it. If your eye is okay. And literally, I, I, I don't know. I, it was kind of like a void. I wasn't, I wasn't, th- I wasn't thinking about anything. And after, after like a few seconds, he said that the eye is okay. It missed your eye by, by, by literally nothing. So it kind of called me down, but I was still, I was still like, so, so stressed and so nervous that like, after it, it took me like another, like 30 minutes to get like through those, through those emotions. And when they sue, when they sue it together and like, Hey, like you can, you can go to shower. It kind of like, uh, the, all the all the all the emotions kind of left and uh, i'm not gonna lie but i kind of i start i start crying like immediately after after they told me i'm fine because because uh it, it was it was scary it was like literally the scariest moment i've been so far that's i mean you gotta have a, like a new lease on life yeah certainly on hockey and all that shit but yeah. like on life to be like damn this was all gone and that just makes me think i've heard stories of players getting injuries on the ice and then what happens in the back after with the trainers or doctors or whatever. And like, I, I'm sure that books could be written about those 10 minute periods of guys figuring yeah. out like, am I going to be okay? Because this is such an insane sport. And it brings me to this. You are an adopter of the neck guard. You, it, yeah. That has to all factor into that, that you're like, I, I've come too close too many times. I'm doing this thing and it's really not going to affect the way I play. So, so when it happened, like, uh, I was already like had an, uh, had an idea in my head that I might try neck guard cause like something like that happens. And it just reminds you like, how is this sport dangerous? How is it fast that anything can happen in a second? And literally like two or three days after the stuff, stuff in England happened when, when that Adam got, got sliced and died, died later in, uh, in, uh, in a hospital. So, uh, I mean, like when I saw it, when I saw it, like still with my with my eye, I sliced. Uh, it, I had such a bad feeling in my stomach. I almost like went to the went to the bathroom and throw uh, and like a thrown up because uh, it it just like basically bring back the the feeling that I had uh, right after right after the moment when when I got hit with a with a skate. So right after that, I'm like, hey hey, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk I'm not gonna risk it. It's not worth it. So I'm gonna put my up. I'm gonna put Nedgar on, and uh, you know, like I'll better be, I'll better, I'll better be uh, ready than sorry with that. So uh, it was like a no-brainer after I after I saw what happened in England, and I just I just said, hey, like, can you guys order me Nedgar? Because like I'm not I'm not gonna play without it. What was like the recovery like after you took the t- took the skate to the face? I didn't know that you fractured your skull. Like, how yeah. how'd you feel the next few days? I mean, uh, the worst thing was like, it was so basically like bloated up. Like I couldn't see anything and the stitches, the stitches were like kind of pinching into my eye. So it was like a nonstop, like shitty feeling, but you know, like I was just basically waiting for, for the moment where I could, where, when I could see, uh, from my, uh, through my eye, when the, when the swelling go, uh, go down. And after that, I just put a, put a cage on and played. And it took me like another, like, month and a half two months when i uh when i could like take my uh take my cage off because with all the all the like a cracks that i had like around my eye socket i will say it looks good too so this is a win-win for you (laughs) it's safe which is by far the most important thing but by far the second most important thing is how does it look and it does look very cool you're talking about the cage or the neck guard i'm talking about the neck guard i I, I think like neck guards from an aesthetic standpoint i like you said that's not the most important part but it's the second most important part look yeah and i mean i mean i mean i i got like a couple like you know you play and like a couple guys go and hey like take your fucking turtleneck off i'm like yeah dude it would be it would be it would be fun or like valid like five years ago but like now i mean like yeah, I mean, like with everything room, that basically. happened, 
yeah but everything that happened i mean like i don't know if that's like a good thing to joke about you know but you know it is what it is it's still like kind of like a stigma or i don't know how to how to describe it like negart is for like guys that are like soft or weak or whatever but i mean like i i just i just like after everything that happened i mean like it's it's just not worth it also like you're not soft you you fight <laughs> you you train mma like it, you can fight somebody that talks shit to you so i did want to ask you about like the mma training are you still doing that yeah i mean uh this uh this summer i was kind of like more uh more with those guys because uh you know i'm doing i'm doing muay thai which is basically thai box right and uh i was doing a lot of like wrestling trainings this summer uh with like a guys who are like in czech like national team like you you 23 or like a guy star on the brink like turning in like a seniors and stuff so i was i was training with them like wrestling with them so uh i I mean, like with those guys, like it's so incredibly hard. Those guys are so incredibly strong. It's a so completely different thing, like than what we doing. You know, some like you are exhausted, like in the way that like you can imagine, because you're not doing it every day like they do. But but it's so it's so good. It's so good. I'm so glad. Like I I have an opportunity, and I had like a people that I know that are in this like that are around the wrestling and around the like boxing that I know and I can train with. So I'm also really grateful for that because like it's 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 really it's really great. Hey, thanks for watching the channel. We appreciate everybody who checks out our stuff, but 80% of our viewers are not actually subscribed to this page. So if you could smash that subscribe button, it would go a very long way for us. The more subscriptions we have, the more visibility we get from YouTube, which allows us to do more. So press that button. Thank you. Uh, you're beloved for your social media presence, and that social media presence is pretty much exclusively Lord of the Rings memes. Uh, I was going to ask you, how many Lord of the Rings meme accounts do you follow? But then I just looked it up, and you only follow one. So do you just have everybody else you follow muted, and you just constantly <laughs> hammer this one account that you follow? You know, you know how it works with like a social media now, like you kind of see like one post, you like it. And then like another, another 15 or 20 of them is going to, going to show up like two minutes after. Cause so, so I can, I can, I can only follow one account and I'll see, I'll see like uh 30, 30 of them, like in the uh, next two minutes. So, uh, yeah, I mean like a lot of the rings is like a one thing that I grew up on and, uh, it was like my favorite, my favorite thing ever when I was young. So it's really, it's really, uh, it's really close to me. And I just, you know, those, those memes are, I think like most of them are uh, really funny. So it's, it's just something, uh, something I like to do. I feel like you've really cornered the market on the uh, horny Lord of the Rings tweets. Cause you have a lot of like <laughs> when, uh, when, uh, we doing it and Helm's Deep comes on, <laughs> like, that shit. like that's unbelievable. You are so fucking weird, and I love it. Do you watch Lord of the Rings in Czech or in English? No, in in English. Like uh, when okay. I was watching in Czech, I can basically uh, I can basically say it by my heart. You know, like when uh, someone was talking, I was I could I could like talk uh, talk with him because I knew all the all the lines that they were gonna say. But you know, lately lately when I was watching like those the extended editions and stuff and. You know, like when I'm when I'm sp when I'm speaking English and everything, like I uh, I'm watching all the movies, uh, all the movies, all the shows in English now. So, but like, lately I was watching it just in English. As Pete said, uh, most of the memes that you post are about Lord of the Rings uh, adversely affecting relationships, which is just not a genre of <laughs> joke or experience I'd ever heard. Not to pry. Like, do you relate to that? Have you been in moments where, like, a romantic partner has been like, "It's me or Gollum," and you're like, <laughs> "Speak Gollum, buddy." I mean, it's one of one of the red flags. If uh, if uh, if a girl tells me that she doesn't like the Lord of the Rings, I'm like, "Okay, you can go, go." But <laughs> but why does like I, I've I've dated people and they've never had to say whether or not they like Lord of the Rings. It's so interesting <laughs> that Lord of the Rings comes up and becomes potentially a divisive issue. Like, how quickly when you meet somebody, how quickly into you knowing somebody does Lord of the Rings come up? I think it's like a third or fourth question, I would say. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> That's 
outrageous. <laughs> That's the best. Is it like on your dating pro? If you had dating profiles, would you put like a deal breaker for me is you don't like Lord <laughs> of the Rings? Yeah, I should put it in my bio. Like I should make a Tinder account and put it in my bio. If you don't look, uh, if you don't like Lord of the Rings, don't swipe. So uh, I should do that. But <laughs> if you don't like Lord of the Rings, move Get the along. Fuck out. Unbelievable. <laughs> Get the fuck out. Uh, how how many times have you watched Lord of the Rings? Like, is this like a once a week kind of once a month, or is it just like a few times okay, a year uh, kind of deal? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I I probably haven't seen it since last year now, because uh, yeah, that's shocking. Because like I, I mean, like it was so so much going on, and uh, especially in summer and stuff. Like you don't you don't really have a time to go and like sit for like a three and a half hours to watch a movie. So I uh, I haven't seen I haven't seen it in a long time. But in total, I I honestly I honestly have no idea. But it. The number, the number would be probably in hundreds. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I, it's, it's probably, it's probably gonna be so weird to say, but it's probably in hundreds. Oh my god! My favorite meme, by the way, and it's tough because there's like 900 that you've posted. But uh, there was a news story, or it was a collection of news stories, and uh, the headlines were: Netflix is concerned about some of its users. Sean, if you want to throw that up. Uh, <laughs> Someone watched Lord of the Rings trilogy 300 times in 2018, according to Netflix, and you posted it with, yeah, 2018 me was wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one there. I guess there's not a question there, but that I mean, is... I mean, I mean, like, I'm sometimes I watch it and I uh, those like stuff that I posted. I'm like, I'm talking to myself. I'm such an idiot, but <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. I mean, this this one, this one was. I, I thought this one is funny, so I'm like, That's okay, like whatever, whatever. I'm gonna post it. Like, I'm not, I'm not the. Uh, I mean, I'm not the guy who's like afraid to post whatever, you know. But I, I think there's like a stigma that's going on that like, you know, hockey players doesn't have the personality or something. But uh, you know, like the, the NHL is such a like a let's say uh in compare with like other other leagues like nba nfl mlb maybe like the nhl is so like gentleman or whatever like like more strict or whether like you don't you don't have a problems like guys in the nba or nfl have so it kind of goes it kind of goes that hockey players can be like uh uh boring i would say so i mean i just I mean, I, if if I like Lord of the Rings, if I like anime, if I like UFC, whatever, like I, I'm not afraid to like say or show that I like it, you know. So that rules, and that's kind of the core of this show: is we get guys on and we fuck around with them. We'll talk about serious stuff as is needed, and we'll do properish interviews. But we also know that there are a lot of fun people in the league, like yourself. Are there though, like yourself, like have you met a lot of other players in the league who uh, are who do wear their like passions on their sleeve the way that you do? <coughs> Sorry, uh, I mean, like from the guys, from the guys that I <clears throat> that I've played with, you know, like yeah, the one the one good example was like Linus. Uh, I mean, Linus doesn't talk about like probably his hobbies that much, but like. Uh, the guy, the guy is a really, really big like anime and manga fan because he he reads manga and uh, you know he watches anime and I think he his his knowledge about it is so so deep and uh, so he's a, one of the guys that like we've been talking about movies you know the episodes of like Naruto like One Piece whatever uh, and he's like a really passionate about it you know and uh like people people really don't know about it because like you know it's his hobby and like he doesn't he doesn't like uh show it much on uh like uh, for the socials and stuff he's like that swedish. but yeah he's swedish so he's a little like uh just, conservative yeah, yeah, yeah just, just for, just for him not braggadocious even if you're like the best yeah, at yeah. what you do yeah exactly exactly so you know there's a lot of a lot of people like you know uh like a hunt uh, like a hunters for example like for me like hunting was never a thing but you know talking talking like with marshy or sway 
and people like that about like hunting it's like crazy how how they like passionate are about it and you know you have pasta who is like a really big like soccer fan or like he he really cares about like a style and fashion and stuff like that so like if you take a look at like the the stuff that he's wearing it's incredible and he can pull it off so there are people there are people like uh for example like pavel zaka because uh he was uh just like a really really good uh really good friend of mine and uh he's a really good teammate but he doesn't have any so any socials but he is very passionate about cars for example you know and just people don't know about it because uh he doesn't have those socials and stuff like that but people like hockey players are not 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 boring like maybe maybe the 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 all the fans or people around like think they are but it just it's just something like you know we don't have those scandals we don't have those stuff like people in nba or nfl has so like Tyreek Hill now, right? Like you don't see you don't see Sidney Crosby get pulled by a police trying to fight off police, you know. So you know uh, did, did do you mean the movie cars or like cars? <laughs> cars, cars, the- cars, cars, cars. Okay, because if he's a cars guy Paul's like a big lightning McQueen guy. Yeah, then like but you like and him McQueen. would rock. Just like, hey, you wanna go see a movie? Is it cars? No. Then I don't fuck with. Like I'm, I'm thinking that he's the same way towards cars as you are towards yeah. uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, I have to ask you, as a bit of a weirdo myself, have you ever felt kind of discouraged in such a gentlemanly space to kind of tone down the weirdness? And have you ever maybe felt kind of bad for being yourself in a space where so many people can? be like hey let's just kind of do this thing this way and follow these these parameters especially uh, in like sports where it's like broy and uh like you're on the nerdy side endearing but yeah. yeah i mean uh you know when i when i was on like a run when i was posting memes like every day i was i was sending it to our uh like to bruins like social media guy and i'm <laughs> like hey is it is it by, like can i even post that or not and never <laughs> There were a few times when he said, "Like, no, please, please don't, don't post that." So, what so I was fucking kinda... Lord of the Rings posts are too <laughs> inappropriate for a grown man to post that their job is worried about them. What What does your for you look like? <laughs> I, I I'll pro- I'll probably wait when I will don't have a contract and I'll post it. But <laughs> no. <laughs> I know now I don't want you to like uh, I don't want to root for you to retire or whatever but man I want to see these memes I gotta see them yeah so the answer to my question is by the way like oh it gets weirder <laughs> like, it can get weirder yeah version. it can get weirder you're on like deep Lord of the Rings web that's wild my oh God. dark 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 Lord of the Rings web that's dark crazy. Lord of the Rings <laughs> web uh, I I wanted to ask you if you had the opportunity to star in a Lord of the Rings movie or Ooh. never play hockey again. But if you did it, you would never be able to play hockey again. Would you do it? Would it be a lead role? Yeah, let's say let's say like not not the number one lead role, but like you're getting the poster. You're on the poster. Lots of oh, time I'm on a poster. Vigo. You're with Vigo pretty much the whole way. Uh, I mean, if it would be like a Orlando Bloom kind of thing when he uh, when he had a, like a hell of a career after, I would probably say yeah, I would do it, but. If it would be someone or someone else, I would probably stick with hockey and watch it, uh, watch it every day, you know. Okay, so just so people won't get mad at you now, we're gonna set this up to confirm that you do love your job. I'm gonna ask you, I do, if you, <laughs> if you would rather have the ring or a Stanley Cup ring, Ooh. and you're going to say like, no doubt Stanley oh. Cup ring, even though I think even after telling you what to answer i'm not Still positive gonna like you're not ring. gonna pick the ring <laughs> yeah. would you rather have the ring from lord of the rings or a stanley cup ring stanley cup ring whoa <laughs> that's a fucking gamer man that's you, you, you got not, that dog you did in not you huh, sell brother? that one i'll tell you what <laughs> you did not sell it <laughs> i don't think acting's in your future now that i saw that <laughs> yeah vigo is vigo wants somebody else the other thing of course oh i i need to note uh, one time I sent Pete one of your Lord of the Rings uh, tweets, uh, Sean, if you could pull up six, where there was a thing <laughs> about Margot Robbie having a crush on Vigo, and you quote tweeted it with, she's just like me, FR, which again gets back to the you speaking in memes things. And 
I sent that tweet to Pete and I said, this guy's unbelievable. This is something that you would tweet. And then Pete told me he DM'd you and said, you should quote tweet this with, she's just like me for real. So <laughs> Pete also ghostwrites some of your Lord of the Rings tweets. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, uh, especially with, like, Vigo, uh, you know, I had a, I had an opportunity to, uh, to meet him this summer. And, oh, oh, shit. Yeah, and uh, he, uh, you know, when I was, when I, like I told you, when I was young, like, I was watching it, like, always, like, uh, every single opportunity. And he was, like, a, something like a hero for me when I was growing up. So, uh, so Vigo was, like, a host for the... For that film festival I was talking about earlier, and so I so I texted like my agent, hey, like I know that like you know the you know the people from the festival, like do you think there is a chance that like uh, you can text someone and uh, try to set up like a meeting uh, meeting with Vigo, because like he's like the one one person like one actor like that I was really like following following like his whole career, and he was like a really basically like a, basically like a hero for me. So uh, I he he set it up he set it up and I was I was really I was really I was really glad that uh, I was able I was able to meet him and I'm gonna be honest with you when I when I met him I literally forgot how to speak English. That's wild. I, That's awesome. I though. didn't. I I was like shaking. I was sweating. I didn't know what to say to him and. And the first thing he said to me, hey, uh, he was like, oh, like I heard, I heard that you're a Bruins player, so I really shouldn't be speaking to you because I'm, I'm live in Montreal, I'm Canadians fan, and I'm like, I was like, uh, 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 you know, I got traded last night, so I think you can speak to me, and he was like, oh, really, good, good then, <laughs> so, so I was, I was just like telling him like, hey, like you know, like I'm following his, I'm uh, following you like since, since I saw Lord of the Rings, like all their movies, like. You were really like you were really like a hero for me. I showed him. I showed him that I have I have the I have a tattoo. I have a tattoo here. Oh, tattoo his on uh, on my forearm, and he was he was really he was like surprised. He was like, uh, his wife his wife was like super super happy about it. That someone someone would have like a uh like a Vigo tattooed on uh, on his body. So it was a really it was a really like a lifetime lifetime memory for my for me and i would be always i would be always like remembering that moment i don't even care about lord of the rings but i fucking love you man like that, yeah. I, i'm so happy for you that you got to have that and that it meant as much as it did to you like did you do you have pictures and everything you got you got like a picture with them i was going to say like how did you yeah, not yeah. post a picture of that but you did when i remember that you did because i commented and i said uh, you're, there's no chance you're ever washing that arm again. It's you showing the tattoo with him, like holding your arm. That I forgot about that. That's incredible. That had to be a crazy roller coaster, like 48 hours for you getting traded, yeah. and then the next day meeting your childhood hero. Yeah, and the worst thing, worst thing about that was uh, that I was talking, I was talking to like a guy who was like setting it up. So I was talking, uh, talking with him for like you know like a week in advance. And, uh, I was, uh, you know, we had a, you know, I was after the trade, so we had a kind of long night with my friends and, uh, I woke up, I woke up the day where I was supposed to meet him and I had a free, I had free missed calls from the guy who was setting it up. So I was freaking out. I would start freaking out. Like if, if I bottle, I, f I feel I like bottle it up because I, I got drunk last night and I'm not going to be able to see him. I'm going to probably jump out of the bridge because cause, cause I was so stressed. But like I, I called him, he picked it up. I was like, I'm really, really sorry. Like, oh, is it, is it still is it still on, right? Like, tell me, tell me it's still on, right? And he was like, yeah, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Just come by like 4 p.m. Like to that place, uh, we will be there or like you will wait for us for a minute. So I'm like... So he told me like be there at like 4 p.m. I was there like at 2:30, they waiting like an hour and a half in advance, just just to not be late. But uh, yeah, it was it was really like one of the one of the like uh, greatest moment in my life. I'm not gonna lie. That's fantastic. So happy for you. Your other uh, claim to fame, of course, is grapes. And the story is, tell me if I'm wrong, in Providence, 
You want to bring fruit to games. You tried. Oh, there he goes. Oh, Sheesh. look at him. What a commitment. Look to at the those bed. green Johns. You uh, you want to bring fruit to games. Oranges made your hands sticky. So you said, fuck it. I'm doing peaches. Peaches made your hands <laughs> sticky. At no point did you say, fuck it. I'm doing forks or something. So you did grapes and grapes are yeah. now them. You got your teammates into grapes. Uh, I want to quickly ask, like, you don't fuck with cotton candy grapes, right? Those things stink no. and everyone likes them. I mean, like, it's way too sweet. I'm not going to lie. It's way too so you, sweet. You, but You raw dog them, yeah, normal yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, normal ones, normal ones. And green are like, the best. Not do you lie. like, like, grape-flavored candy? Or are you just, like, straight-up grape? Because I, I, I honestly like think I like a... I, candy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, a grape juice and grape candies are not good. Not going to lie. I don't think they're any good. I don't think they taste like grapes at all. Like I don't know, I don't know who come who come with like a taste of uh, grapes candy with when it doesn't even taste like a grape. I gotta fucking say, man, grape soda, love it. And you guys haven't had like a good fucking grape gum. No. Oh, yeah. brother. I is it? Is it I like those? Soda uh, or chew gum, but both those are good. Is it is it like those like a uh, what's the name of those like a baseball bubble gums? Uh, uh, big league big chew. league chew like that type of thing. Oh, big league big, big league, league chew. chew and that uh, is good. That is that is not bad. That is not bad. I like those. I like those. But otherwise otherwise gra grape juice whatever I don't like it. How how do the Minnesota grapes compare to New England grapes? Uh, I mean not bad not bad. I'll I'll find a great place to buy buy grapes. I mean I've been here just a few days but. You know, that's, uh, that's something I need to work on. You should go to the Mall of America and as soon oh. as you walk in, be like, excuse me, I'm told this place has everything. Where are the grapes? <laughs> Have you been to the Mall of America yet? <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. But I think like uh, uh, already like a 10 people told me about the Mall of America. So I'll need, I will need, to, I'll need to check it out. Dude, it's fucking sick. I'll, I, I did a, like a, a, a video that was like a tour of the Mall of America showing all the cool spots. I'll send it to you. It didn't show anything. Okay, it just showed you. like, hey, they have a gap here. And it, oh, it, it wasn't instructive. It was just pointing out all the shit that every mall has. Uh, oh, but, yeah, basically, uh, yeah. Oh, is there, is there Macy's? Is there Macy's in it? Oh. You big Macy's guy? No, no, I'm not. But I would say that, like, if if they have a gap and everything, Macy's is probably in it too. Right? I feel like every Honestly, mall has to have a Macy's. I did this yeah. bit years ago, and you have a way bigger following than me. Steal this bit and just go to the Mall of America and be like, "Holy shit, this place has pretzels! Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> it's just all shit. Just find the most random thing that you like, would yes. find absolutely anywhere. Just be like, yeah, yeah. Bathrooms in a mall. Oh my, yeah, like, oh my God, there's a Starbucks in here. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like, Minnesota, I think we're going to get along. You guys have <laughs> absolutely everything. Yeah, man. You should, they, they do have roller coasters and shit. In all seriousness, Mall of America, Party. pretty cool place. Um, let me ask you about some other fruits. Just, just uh, give me some grades, F through A. What do you think of okay. pears? Pears? Uh, I would say B plus. That's a good grade. How about a strawberry? A. Blueberry? B. Interesting. Now, th this one's, I think, awesome. But if you don't like sticky, you're going to hate it. Mango. Oh, mango. Uh... Okay, if it's like a mango, like a mango juice or mango, mango like a smoothie or something, I would grade it like high, like probably like B, B plus. But mango on its own, I, I don't know. I just don't really like the texture. I would give it like a D. I'm not going to lie. I was like, Dude, that's, that's wild, but you do seem like you're a texture guy based off of some of these grades. And an easy yeah. use guy. Like yeah. they, 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 the UX on Mango is clunky. Uh, how much of this is uh, you being a video game guy? Because video game guys love the snacks that don't leave yeah. any residue for the mm -hmm. controller and the, and the keyboard. So, uh, so I'm a, I'm a big like, a, I'm a big like, um, uh, Let's say a st single player guy, you know, uh, big, uh, you know, I like to play like a games where they have like a long, uh, long, good campaigns, like with a great story. 
but also I'm like a big uh, Call of Duty guy. I play Warzone a lot, and uh, we have a we have a really good group uh, with my buddies from back home where we like to play a lot of Warzone. And before before like every time we play, I just go there and like make myself a tea. You know, uh, I'll do strawberries, wash them, like cut the cut the green stuff off and the green leaves. You know, and just like a prepper, prepare myself with like a healthy snack. So you know, the the all the all the fruit that doesn't like make your hands sticky or like doesn't make a mess after. I'm I'm all for it. And, I knew it. You know, I, yeah, I uh, I really like to be like prepared for that. When you play for like a few hours, couple of hours, like you just need like a, some good snack. So again, so pineapple probably out of the question for you, right? Oh, pineapple! Pineapple is like pineapple is really good. Uh, it's a it's a, like a pain in the ass when you uh, when you have to like a cut it or on your own. So when you bu- when you buy like a pineapple chunks, uh, I'll just grab a, grab a fork and I eat it because I love pineapple. Yeah, pineapple. I mean... pi- pineapple. Pineapple is like really 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 good. I love pineapple. I'm sorry. Okay. I just L- last one tomato. People forget that's a fruit. <laughs> oh, I love tomato. I'm really really big tomato guy. I love tomato. <laughs> awesome i I don't i I don't i don't understand i don't understand how someone cannot like tomato and there's like so many people in especially in states which don't like tomatoes they do like a cheeseburger or burger without tomatoes i'm like like how can you do it like it just gotta be on a burger i don't know that's an automatic for me in fact sometimes i like to sneak a tomato into a breakfast sandwich it's just Mm -hmm. another it's another layer and it's good yeah, it's not necessary for me though. Like how people treat it like it's lettuce and it's not lettuce. It's not there, lettuce. Like, yeah, really lettuce to be is there. more important for like but burger. Purposes. I like lettuce on a burger. Yeah, I'll do all that. So shit. are you like a are you a huge ketchup guy? Uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm not like a guy who puts like ketchup on pasta, but I know a lot of people are. But I love ketchup. With like ketchup with fries is probably like the most like needed thing ever because i think like there can be there can be fries without ketchup but uh yeah like i'm not like the guy who's gonna put it on pasta yeah you you have ketchup you have like tasteful ketchup energy you like you seem like a guy who uses like if you were to tell me that you were like a mayo on fries guy or something i or even barbecue sauce i'd be surprised i would bet a lot that you're going catch up on uh, on fries. I uh, I did want to ask you a couple of video game questions. Number one, mm-hmm. what are your preliminary thoughts on Black Ops Six? Oh, uh, so first of all, I'm really excited for zombies because it's supposed to be back, uh, the round based again, which mm-hmm. it wasn't for like past few years. So I'm very excited for that. I'm kind of worried about that, like new movement that you can like Bang. jump on the side. Cause like I I was watching like a lot of guys playing the uh, beta, and it looks wild. It looks wild. Like if those like guys who like really play like uh, multiple hours a day and can learn how to move with that, it's gonna be it's gonna be so hard to play against. But you know like I I just have a hope like every single year that it's gonna be good again. But you know the last one. The last one I, I kind of liked. It wasn't bad, but it's not like the you know the uh, the Modern Warfare, which was like six years ago or seven years ago, or the Black Ops Two, Black Ops Three, Black Ops Four. So, you know those old ones, which were like really really good. But you know I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful again. And like from my first first like a uh, couple of videos I've seen, it looks it looks great, and I'm I'm just excited for it. And uh, as somebody who has recently gotten back into couch gaming and like single player story mm-hmm. games, give me your top three like single player campaigns. Ooh. <laughs> okay, uh, number one's gonna be Witcher Three: Wild Hunt. I've heard great things. I've never done The Witcher. Did you do The Witcher series with Henry Cavill? Oh, do we lose him? You're muted, maybe. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh yeah, we yeah. gotcha. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I did the series. First series was great, but I think after after first series, the second and third one, it got into the normal, common Netflix bullshit, which is uh, destroying all the all the books and all the book stories, like uh, 
for example, the rings of power doing with uh, doing with talking work now, which is so bad. But uh, works. you know, they, for, have, they have. I've seen they your posts lives. about that. I don't know what this is, but I've seen your posts the orcs about are it. Actually and you're good people. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm uh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about anything else, but I just think it's so fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, for someone, you're gonna watch it through. For for someone, uh, of course, I'm gonna watch it through because, like, it's about Lord of the Rings, so I'll I'll take myself through it. Like for someone who didn't read the books or don't know anything about it, I'm I'm very positive that you're gonna like it if you don't know what what the hell is going on in the books and stuff like that. It's it's it looks great. It looks great. It's a very well like uh, filmed and stuff, but it has absolutely zero zero like resemblance to talking work it's so it's so bad it's just the amazon's amazon doing like whatever they want with it but it's 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 whatever it, it's like i'm just disappointed with it i'm gonna watch it once because it's about lord of, uh, basically like lord of the rings uh, and but you know it's it's just not good but uh first like i guess the video games witcher witcher wild hunt is number one then uh, I gotta go with Skyrim. Okay. Skyrim's gonna be number two, and number three, uh, I'm gonna go with. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna top five because there's way too much. I'm sorry, I gotta do top Love five. It. Uh, number three, I'm gonna go with God of War, the whole uh, the whole like a God of War series. Uh, number three, it's gonna be Gears of War uh which is like an xbox exclusive uh, i grew up on it so good and number five uh i'll have to do uh it hell it was gonna be assassin creed okay like all of them or just w- yeah one in particular? it's it's so it's so it's so many of them i would just i'm just gonna date i'm just gonna get a series like uh Assassin's Creed is probably number five to whole series so so witcher witcher uh skyrim God of War, Gears of War, and Assassin's Creed. Have you done uh, Ghost of Tsushima? I'm I'm doing oh, that right I, now. It was it was so good. Ghost yeah. of Tsushima, so good. I, I'm I started playing that. If you've seen the new one, that Black Myth Wukong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. You seen that? I I I don't know. I just uh, I hate those like Elden Elden Ring, uh, Dark Souls kind of games where you're gonna die like. 15,000 times before you finish the game and I absolutely hate it but I keep buying them I keep trying to play them which which just results with me being completely pissed but I'm just I just always buy the new game and just try to play it and like delete it after four or five hours and but but this one this one looks really good and it's it's really well really well done I was interested in that one. I'm also. Uh, I think I'm going to start Warhammer 4K Space Marine. Oh 2. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm. Um. I. I want to. I want to play that too. It looks really good too. Let's link up, buddy. Let's do it. It's co-op. Dude, let's do it. It's co-op. I still. Yeah. I, you still haven't responded for my call out in one v one and in uh, multiplayer Call of Duty. So I'm. I'm expecting you accepting that call out and set something up. So Black Ops Six. Let's make it happen. One okay, one. let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Fuck yeah. Well, we started the conversation with you living in Vinny Letary's house after getting traded for him. And then somehow it reached a crazier place, which is, I don't know what any of those words were. I'm so <laughs> happy for everybody who plays video games. And I, like, I'm not doing the like whatever that means kind of thing. But I'm like, fuck. It's so cool and also devastating that there is like such a deep world about which you could know not a goddamn thing. And but that's you life. could get into it. You just like refuse to buy a PlayStation. It's not that I refuse to buy it. It's just a, like, I, I'm happy. I, I just don't think it's going to happen for me. But it's <laughs> okay. happening for you guys. And I fucking <laughs> love that for you. That's amazing. Shit, man. You're Pete, the best. Pete, you're, uh, you're, you're a PlayStation guy? Yeah, I'm a PlayStation guy. Your Xbox? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I bought both because, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like, PlayStation got those, uh, Sony got those better, like exclusive games, mm-hmm. like God of War, Ghost of Tsushima. It's it's better than Xbox has. But I I always been like a fan of like Xbox controllers, and I just I just like 
I just like Xbox better than overall, so I've always been an Xbox guy. But PlayStation's got better exclusive games. My justification is I have a PC, so like anything that I can play oh, on nice, PC, nice. I can probably like take all those Xbox games for the most part. So like, and I get to use the Xbox controller on PC. So I'm surprised you're not a PC gamer. No, I, uh, you know, I love to play like a strategy games on uh, uh, PC. When uh, when I was younger, we we did like with me and my uh, buddies from the place where I grew up. Because I grew up in like a small village where uh, when there was like literally like 150 people, like literally small, small village. And we used to do like a LAN parties and we were playing Age of Empire or Stronghold Crusader. Uh, Crusader. So we've been playing those games like for my buddies and we've been just playing LAN games like against against each other. And we were like, it was so funny because we've been doing like a coalitions. We just like team up against one guy or and uh, just, just you know, completely destroyed him. It was so fun. You know, you just get like, we just got locked, uh, we just got locked in a, in a room and played for like a free four hours just to Age of Empires and Stronghold uh, or Stronghold Crusader. And it was, uh, uh, it was like one of the one of the great like uh, you know childhood memories too. That 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 warms my heart because I have like this fear that young people are not gonna like remember or experience like the childhood sleepover uh, experience oh, yeah, yeah. that I had as a kid where you just fucking play video games in the basement for like all night and pull all nighters because now everybody gets to play online we played parappa yeah. the rapper what do so, you know about that i have no, no idea what that you is. you don't know about parappa the rapper no really i i haven't heard about it as well so fuck you guys i'm trying to talk video <laughs> game i'm trying to like, uh, like oh I, actually, how about oregon trail you guys I heard played that? a video game one time no there was a video game for playstation called parappa the rapper and it was you would like press buttons to rap what? That yeah. sounds wow. wild. And if you press the wrong button, for if you press the wrong button instead of rapping, Parappa would say, "Oops." What? So, so I would get on there and intentionally fuck up. So it'd be like, "I'm Parappa and I'm baking." Oops, 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 oops. <laughs> That's how I play video games. Hell yeah, brother. So, yeah. So, yeah so, now who doesn't know shit? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess you're a better video gamer than me because I never heard about it. <laughs> kind of an OG myself, Jakob. Uh, I did want to note from that conversation that uh, because I was sitting back and listening, you even gesture with grapes, which was really cool. You were talking. Oh, did I? Like, you I, was, I was doing that. I was doing you were like had a grape grapes. to make your point. You'd be like, <laughs> and you see uh, – that so that that's just fantastic, and you're the greatest. I lastly, I want to squeeze in a, a wild question: D uh, Are are you too young for Marion Gabrick to have meant anything to you? Sorry, sorry, what was that again? Are you too young for Marion Gabrick to have like made an impression? Or uh, he he was a I think he was like Slovak, but kind of from your oh, neck Ga of the woods. Ga uh, Gaborik, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I obviously I know him. I know him. I know he's like one of the one of the wild legends, basically. Yeah, well, he your next brother, Slovenia, right? Because he played with uh, Chara on the national just, team. Yeah, yeah, the national team. What's, he's what? He's what? Slovakia. Yeah, that's okay. what I thought. Yeah, but yeah, you're next, man. So, just bunch of wild legends. I, we're excited to watch you with the wild man. Same. It's it should be Thank you. it should be Thank really you. exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited too. I'm excited for it to start, you know. And I think I think it's a gr uh, good group of guys in the locker room, good group of players, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Even even though we play, uh, it's a it's a very very hard division. You oh, know, yeah. I think I think it might be it might be the hardest hardest uh, right now. You got Dallas. You get uh, uh, who who else? Colorado. Uh, Colorado, uh, you got Nashville, which mm -hmm. which is gonna be probably very very good. You got Winnipeg, you got mm -hmm. St. Louis, you know Chicago. Got, Chicago got got much better. You got Utah. Uh, it's a it's a very hard division, and you know uh, I'm excited for it to start. And uh, you know it's the first time first time I'm playing on uh, the other conference. So uh, yeah yeah I mean I'm I'm very excited for it and uh, uh, for the for the season you know. The West is so much cooler than the East, man. You <laughs> upgraded, uh, and you're still you're still doing ninety four. 
Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll still go 94. I kind of, I was, talk, I was talking about like with my dad and because uh, I was always a 13, 13 guy, but <clears throat> in a in a Boston 13, uh, Charlie Coy had 13, and uh, uh, 13 was available uh, available here in uh, with Minnesota. But I was kind of like, hey, like I, I was playing, I was playing with 94. Uh, since my game one here in NHL, so I'm like, hey, um, I'm just gonna keep it. I'm just gonna keep it. And nine plus nine plus four is thirteen, anyways. So uh, it's I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with it. That's uh, some swifty shit, and I <laughs> I feel like that's a thing that's happening now, where people will if a number isn't taken, they'll take numbers that add up to it. But I'll say ninety four suits you well, like a ninety four jersey and a 94. neck guard. That just hits, brother. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, it convinced me to go 94 on my EASHL player. I threw 94 wow. on one of the custom wow. jerseys that got sent to me. And I do have a little bit of a fun fact for you. You are the okay. first player in Minnesota Wild history to wear 94. That's great. I think it's the second, the second time because I, I don't think anyone else had it in Boston too. So, damn, it's, it's good. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Making You're a it trailblazer. Your own. You're a trailblazer. Yeah. yeah, of course. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. And if you skate really fast, kind of looks like 99. <laughs> and you're a fast skater. People oh. be like, damn. Is that Gretzky out there? Who's that 99 out there? Pretty sweet. And they'll see, no, it's a much younger man. Uh, Jakob, you're the yeah, best. With a, with a hands of number one, too. So it's, uh, it's a goalie hands with uh, 99 speed. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> amazing uh you are the greatest thank you so much for coming on with us i uh, i i think it won't be the last time we all connect here because your whole vibe is exactly what this show is going for so uh we appreciate it my friend thank you thank you for for i guess inviting me all right enjoy we this season you. man good luck yeah thank you thank you fellas <laughs> 